ITV this week um, have been showing a four-part drama at 9pm on this Thursday called Innocent from Chris Lang and Matt Ulrich. focuses on David Collins, a character played by Lee Ingleby, who um, eight years previous was arrested for the murder of his wife, has had two subsequent trials, and the most recent one um, was sort of thrown out of court, is that right? Yes. Overturned due to... Overturned, yeah, and he's, overturned, been, yeah. he's been released... The case has now sort of been reopened with a new investigator, um, D.I. Kathy Hudson, played by Angel Colby, who rather awkwardly is in a relationship with the original investigator, played by Nigel Lindsay. Uh, meanwhile, um, David goes to back to live with his brother, Phil, Phil Collins, which we liked Come as a on. gag. <laughs> Come on. Dan, played by do, Daniel. Do they live in a sister studio flat? Oh, nice. No. <laughs> no, but that was a missed opportunity. It was, wasn't it? David and his and his wife Tara. 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 His wife Bloody Tara yeah. had two kids who have now been living for the last eight years with Tara's sister Alice and Alice's husband Rob, played by Hermione Norris and Adrian Rawlins. Alice is sort of shocked that um, David is out of prison and doesn't like want him around the kids. She sees them as her kids, hers and Rob's kids now. But obviously, David, one of the things he wants is a relationship with his children again, and, and the two of them just can't stand each other. That's about it, really, in terms of stories. Well, there is, and... there's, no, there's a third uh, set to, a third suspect, if you like. Oh, yeah. The... In, oh, yeah. In, in David's um, friend, who is now a gynecologist who's divorced, who was apparently in a relationship with Tom. Tara before uh, her death uh, that sent... David to prison. So there's, yeah, Tom there's, Wilson. There's he changed on. his he changed his alibi, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. yeah. He was having an affair with her, and he's been bribing his ex-wife to keep quiet. And his current wife is pregnant, and there's that whole thing there. Okay. Yeah. At time of recording, Gary has seen three of the four. Me and Luke have seen all four. So we'll try to keep it as spoiler-free as possible for you, the listener, as well. I really like this. I think it, it drew me in somewhere around the middle of episode one. I have to admit that the stuff right at the beginning with Lee and Gilby acting all angry uh, and going around and punching people. I was a little bit like, oh, it's going to be sort of like a little, little bit bland and I wasn't quite sure. Then somewhere in the middle of episode one, they started to draw in things that were extremely believable. The children start using their step parents' real names instead of calling them mum and dad. Well, they're not step they, parents; they're aunt and well, uncle. Well, aunt and uncle, but at the beginning of it, they're calling them mum and dad. They're like foster parents, aren't yeah. they? They sort of fostered yeah. them. So yeah. th- at the beginning of it, they start they they're using them as mum and dad. Then, as they get more attachment to their dad, as as things begin to unravel, they start calling them Alice, and you know, and it's just subtle things like that mm. that yeah, I just no, I think like that as well. I know. would happen in a situation like this, you know, and up to the end of the third episode. They're very much trying to convince you that Liam Bigelby's character is totally innocent. Yet, as a viewer, I'm not convinced. Mm, okay. And I don't know why. No, And I, I feel like all the others are just very good red herrings. And I just like the storytelling. I hope it's got an ending that I can actually see as logical. That's my only wish for it now. Overall, I really liked it. And, I, and I'm surprised how much I thought Liam Bigelby changed. You know, he got very... Mm. He changed over three episodes a lot. And I think evolved. that was really good. Yeah, evolved very well. I think I'm the same as Gary in terms of it did take me probably most of the first episode where it was sort of character building and mm. sort of explaining the evidence and, you know, the mistakes that were made in the original investigation and things like that and sort of establishing the world. But I think what it did was it paced it ever so well. So you got a bit more drama in each episode. And what you yeah. said in your interview with uh, Richard Clark, the director, he said, you know, they were trying to get you to sort of second guess the characters, whether they did it or not, how you felt about them in every scene. That was especially true of David and Alice, who I think, you know, in some scenes you're trying to make them as sympathetic as possible. In other scenes, they're trying to make them, well, he has, you know, David has got this anger, so maybe he did do it. You know, there was the stuff with Alice and the money and her, not having a sort of rosy relationship with her sister that she sort of said to the police that she did have. And the stuff with the the investigation was more prevalent to start off with. But I think as it gets on and you get to see Lee Ingleby with the kids a little bit more and you you get a softer side of him, which I think worked. And I, I just like, I think it built ever so well. And I think it, 
climax brilliantly in the last episode. But I really like. I mean, the two performances I would I would sort of highlight is I really thought Angel Corby did a really good job as as yeah. the new DI on the job. I didn't like her with Nigel Lindsay. I felt he was a bit too sort of stereotypical theories first, ask questions later type comment. Yeah, don't let the evidence get in the way of we want to put this man behind bars type yeah. situation. Right? Yeah. The, sort of, the sort of blinkered view, yeah. Also Dan Ryan as, as Phil Collins. Um, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't thought, look a bit like him though, uh, to be fair. But I think he, I like his, his sort of story of, you know, I spent seven years sort of campaigning to get you released and I think he and Lee Ingleby have got a very good chemistry. He, he's the only other character that I would in any way put forward as a suspect because very little about him and what he's about that makes me think maybe he's the hidden character in the background that they're trying to protect for the fourth episode but again that is purely just based on my knowledge of crime fiction and television rather than any specific evidence that i can point to was it a right decision to do it over four nights or would it have been better doing sort of four weeks and you build the suspense looking over my timeline now the papers websites and all of websites like ours have completely jumped on who do you think was the killer who is the killer yeah. and they got all these theories and i think that helps that's helped over the four nights the ratings have been strong over the four nights i watched four over four nights last week matt watched two together two uh, three and four together and i think it does have a nice momentum and build well if you'd watched that first one gary and found something in it you'd liked but perhaps not enough to come back the next week, then you may have fallen out of yeah, love with I, it. Yeah, th- that's a good point. Had this been on weekly, I don't know whether I would have gone back to episode two on the night it was on. I probably would have recorded it and thought, oh, I'll watch it, you know, and stuff. Yeah, my, my views, I mean, I've done a lot of coverage for it, and the interviews up there now on the podcast feed and on the site. I would recommend listening to it, even if you didn't watch Innocent, because it is very fascinating about what a director does in terms of tv as opposed to film and what sort of influence he has as opposed to the writer sort of thing it was very very interesting but yeah that's up there on the feed and on the website i'm i thought it was a really is that word again a really solid (laughs) four-part drama it it moves at quite a speed as well once it It gets going but what i liked about it and i suppose you can make the link to unforgotten is the fact that it moves at that pace but you still feel like you get enough time with all of the key players, and that's a real skill that I mean, Matt I think and Chris have got. Another sort of similarity to Unforgotten, I would say, is that you have got a believable sort of central detective as well in yeah. Angel Colby, who, apart from the Nigel Lindsay stuff, which I don't really buy, I think she's a sort of, you know, a, a copper who just sort of wants to yeah. do her job. You know, you see her with her, her son... Yeah, she's a single mother. She hasn't got any demons or anything like no. that and stuff. I'd like to see another show with her, you know, like her sort of, I suppose, what they're doing with Julian Baptiste. I, uh, I I really enjoyed it. And I think I have been going backwards and forwards. If you listen to the early podcasts I do, I did, uh, I used to say we make really good four-part, three-part dramas. Then I sort of went off the idea because... It doesn't really allow for a lot of character development, but I think this proves that you can have a really tight story told with character development, with emotional connection Mm. over those four hours if you have a strong central story, good writers at the helm, and really strong performances from from the main cast. So if ITV want to give us more four-parters of this ilk, then I'm all for it. I thought it was really... Solid.